We see Endeavor's crew once again exiting crew quarters and heading for the elevator. Thumbs up. Ready to fly today. Chief of the Astronaut Office, Steve Lindsay, 
WTD, I have you loud and clear. Good afternoon, Tom. Good afternoon, Steve. And you. Julie Payette, signaling a kiss. Yes, and go, three, and blowing a kiss. And a hammer three. Three. And all systems on 212, verify systems ready for crew module closeout. Hold on to less computer located in the firing room integration console. And the orbiter access arm now is being retracted away from Endeavour. Endeavour, the world will be watching as you complete the control module, making the Japanese a fully functional partner. PK, rock time. Have a nice trip. You bet, thank you. Those words from orbiter test conductor Doug Palin to Commander Mark Polanski. T minus one minute and counting. Power. Endeavour is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. Minus 18 seconds. 15. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Endeavour and the launch pad from acoustical energy. We're go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Four. Three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Endeavor, completing Kibo and fulfilling Japan's hope for an out of this world space laboratory. Houston, Endeavor, roll program. Roger, roll, Endeavor. This is Mission Control Houston. Endeavor's roll maneuver is being completed. Now going into a head down position on track for its flight to the International Space Station. Flying at 1200 miles per hour, 1 mile in altitude, and 7 miles downrange already to the Kennedy Space Center. Endeavor's engines were throttling down as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum pressure on the vehicle. Now 50 seconds into the flight. Throttle up. Go and throttle up. The three engines on board are throttling back up. Endeavour flying at 1100 miles per hour, 10 miles in altitude, and 10 miles downrange. We'll be standing by for a burnout and separation of the solid rocket boosters. Combined, the twin boosters provide 5.3 million pounds of thrust to propel the orbiter towards space. Okay, I understand the, uh, what you'll need is an A11, the cryo, tank 4, O2 and H2, Alpha and Bravo, all four to off. Hi, I'm Mark Polanski of the STS-127 crew, and you're watching NASA TV. Hi, I'm Tom Marshburn of the STS-127 crew, and you're watching NASA TV. Hi, I'm Doug Hurley of the STS-127 crew, and you're watching NASA TV. Hi, I'm Chris Cassidy of the STS-127 crew, and you're watching NASA TV. Hello, I'm Julie Payette of the STS-127 crew, and you're watching NASA TV. Hi, I'm Dave Wolf of the STS-127 crew. You're watching NASA TV.
camera set up in 5D. Window of the Space Shuttle Endeavors hatch as it is being carefully lined up by Commander Mark Zelensky as he moves in towards the International Space Station. Again, planning to dock to the Harmony nodes pressurized mating adapter. I want to announce this is Nathan's commander about the United States, which has one day in the air iron. And this is one of the largest in the air, Colonel Tim Cook, the Ryan. Commander Gennady Stalkin, under the ceremonial bell ringing that signals the arrival of the new to the International Space Station. You saw there the visiting commander, Mark Polanski of the Space Shuttle Endeavor, coming on first, followed by pilot Doug Hurley. Welcome to the Endeavor School for Space Station. It's a very remarkable event, not only for us, but for the whole space program, because this is the next United States Space Station Assembly, and it's very historic moment, but because right now we got together 30 people on our space station. Welcome and we are very happy. Thank you, Gennady. Uh, the crew at CS-127 is extremely happy to be here. 13 is a pretty big number, but it's, uh, it's going to be an outstanding visit for us. We're happy to go ahead and uh, deliver uh, Colonel Copra, who is new home for a while. And uh, maybe Koichi is looking forward to, uh, to a hot shower back home. So uh, we'll make this short because we have a lot of work to do, but we are just thrilled to be here. Thank you. The Space Shuttle's payload bay is the uh, International Space Station's robotic arm, which will uh, be doing much of the work today as it uh, reaches in to grapple the uh, new Japanese exposed facility and lift it out of the payload bay. There's a good shot of the... Uh, Japanese exposed facility on next integrated cargo carrier in the shuttle's payload bay. It'll be an uh, intricate set of robotic maneuvers uh, by two Canadian-built robotic arms to move it into position for installation on the end of the Japanese module. There's some other tasks uh, that they're going to ask Wolf and Cobra to uh, take care of down in the payload bay of Endeavor, but. Uh, We'll be making that judgment call over the next few minutes just based on the timeline. We'll uh, talk to the crew about that, about the plan ahead. There you see the exposed facility, this large 18 feet wide uh, porch-like structure which will go on the outside of Kibo and will allow up to 10 different experiments to be uh, installed and exposed to the harsh environment of space. Basically what will happen is once this exposed facility is driven into uh, the Kibo laboratory there you see on the right, uh, there's four different attachment points uh, around this large circular ring you see there uh, that are driven by motors. So once the uh, connection is made, those motors will drive the bolts into the exposed facility which will complete the connection. As you can see from this view, the integrating cargo carrier holding on the spares for the International Space Station is now in motion. You're seeing it rise slowly out of the shuttle's cargo bay. The pallet itself is 8 feet long and 13 feet wide, about 10 inches thick. And it's shaped like a triangle with the corners cut off. Loaded into the cargo bay pointing down and has connections for heat and electricity to keep the equipment healthy. This video shows you the end effector of the space station's robotic arm, which Mission Specialist 
Dave Wolf will be climbing into soon after he exits the airlock of the space station. That should be coming up pretty soon. The station's down to about 1.4 pounds per square inch, so they have a few more steps to go before they do turn their suits on to battery power, but it's not long now. This is Mission Control Houston, now a live view on board Endeavour's uh, flight deck. As you see Tom Marshburn there working on the outside of the pressurized mating adapter number two that uh, forms the connection between the Harmony node and Shuttle Endeavour itself. from the crew of Endeavour. We just wanted to go ahead and take this opportunity to uh, extend our warmest thanks to uh, Gennady, Station Commander, to all the uh, crew members of the International Space Station that uh, will be here after we depart. Endeavour continuing to back away from the International Space Station as the traditional bells are being rung on board the complex, signaling the departure of the crew. And there you see Shuttle Endeavour at the very bottom of the screen beginning its fly around of the station complex. It's at a distance of about 470 feet right now. It will complete one and a half revolutions of the station. Live video from Endeavour now. Doug Hurley, the STS-127 pilot, continuing to fly Endeavour around the International Space Station, getting a good view. The two spacecraft are over the South Pacific right now at an altitude of 216 miles. Just a few seconds from now, they will be passing the uh, equator, crossing across uh, Mexico, and then across Texas. Endeavour is now directly below the International Space Station at a distance of 614 feet down below Endeavour at an altitude of 221 miles are the waters of the North Atlantic. About five minutes away from the intercept of the heading alignment circle, the imaginary circle that the commander will fly Endeavour around to line up with the runway. Endeavour, take air data. Take air data. Endeavour Houston, Endeavour's you are on energy, approaching the hatch. Alignment and speed Winds are the now 7 peak 12 on the nose, 3 peak 5 so. from the right. Commander Mark Polanski, TV, nominal to deploy. control of the space shuttle Endeavour to fly around Copy the on nominal to. Under, conducting a 210 degree turn, a left overhead turn. Sonic booms uh, audible at the landing site. This is a view from the heads-up display in the cockpit of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. Endeavour's landing gear will be locked down in place at 300 feet in altitude. Just 30 seconds to touch down. The landing gear is down and locked. Doug Hurley now deploying the drag chute. And Commander Mark Polanski rotating the nose gear down to the deck. Nose gear touchdown. Houston Endeavour, we'll stop. Roger, we'll stop Endeavour. Welcome home. Congratulations on a superb mission from beginning to end. Very well done. Well, thanks to you and to the whole team. That's what it's all about, and we're happy to be home. 